Now moving on, cupping therapy or hijama is a form of treatment that removes toxins from body tissues and organs through suction. Having originated from Asia and the Middle East, it is of course gaining popularity across the globe as an alternative treatment for blood disorders, rheumatic diseases, high blood pressure among other ailments. Akida Kasam visited one of the centers offering this particular therapy in Nairobi and has prepared the following report. Cupping therapy dates back to the 1550s with its roots in Asia, the Middle East, Eastern Europe and Latin America. Back then, therapists used treated cow horns or bamboo trees to suck toxins from the body. The common tool now is the glass cup that is heated and then placed on specific area of the body for suction. In this therapy, there are two types. Dry cupping and wet cupping. In wet cupping, blood is drawn through small cuts on the skin and is common in removing toxins and improving blood circulation. Dry cupping does not involve removal of blood and is preferred in easing joint pain, inflammation, body comfort and cardiovascular diseases, especially athletes who use it for muscle pain. Before a session, there are several precautions to be observed. So before hijama, it's always better for you to take shower. Because if you do hijama, you're not going to take shower for 24 hours. For you to heal quickly, if you take shower, you may get uh, sick the next day and the scar may uh, be uh, exposed to the water and then be there for years. Like two to three times, you always ask the patient if he's feeling comfortable. If it's too tight, it may cause some muscle problem and braces, so you loosen up a little bit. Through consultation, the doctor determines whether therapy will be directed at an ailment or just purifying the blood. In beginning the process, the therapist prepares the patient, cleans the skin of germs by applying massage oil and wet wipes before using special cups to stick them to different points of the back. After a while, the cups are removed. The area they had covered is inoculated and the cups put back to suck the dirt through air pressure. Then the area is cleaned again to ensure the toxin do not go back to the body. The side effects of this therapy include mild discomfort, burns, bruises or skin infection. Some people have problems with the after, after, after yam as well. I've seen people are complaining about the wound is always there. Or maybe the scars it never goes out. Maybe they didn't get any benefit. And some people do like uh, they, they, they charge by, by, by cupping. People are complaining. People will hear someone will just say, I did hijama like a month ago and I didn't get all the benefit. And if you ask, he will tell you, I did two cups, three cups. It doesn't help. It is also not recommended for people with liver, kidney or heart failure, expectant mothers, persons with blood disorders like hemophilia, skin condition like eczema, a person with leukemia, a patient who needs a blood transfusion or who recently underwent surgery or is weak. Precautions also apply in post-therapy session. Hijama people may not allow to take proteins, proteins, whether meat or milk or nuts, spicy food and oily food. There's always a, a glucose shift after hijama. It's better for you to lay down, just lay low, don't take a lot of food, don't take a lot of sweet things, just drink enough water and relax that day. It is true that cupping therapy is gradually gaining popularity, not only in the country, but across the globe. As with all treatments, it is important to see a qualified practitioner. Reporting for Easy Friday, I am Akida Kasim Akida.